and welcome to HCL's Red Ladder Conversations. My name is Carol Kreiner and I serve as today's host and moderator and I'm so pleased to be here. This morning we are engaging in a conversation about gender diversity and equality. We aim to underscore how empowered women empower women. Well, our first segment will focus on establishing the baseline of why gender uh, diversity in the workplace is important and where are we making progress. And so, Privy, I'd really like to start with you. I'd like to hear your perspective. What's the business case on gender equality? What's What do you see as its significance in the workplace? You know, I think uh, I would say that a few years ago, if we look at uh, gender diversity or any kind of diversity, didn't really have a lot of stats that were tied to it in terms of the business value proposition, the improvements that it can do to top and bottom line, right? And uh, thankfully, there have been some great studies done by fantastic, uh, you know, consulting partners and others in the in market. And it shows diversity drives stock performance. It drives, you know, being able to attract and retain talent. It drives internally different ways and creating ways of addressing the same issues, right? So there's so many benefits to it, right? If we want to be innovative, we have to allow diverse diversity to come in. So I'm really encouraged and pleased to see how much progress has been made. And there's still so much more to be made, right? It's fantastic to be able to get that. So yeah, if we want to improve our stock prices, our improvements, top and bottom line, diversity is a must. Marty, I'd love to hear your perspectives on, as well. Yeah, I, I echo um, the sentiment and, 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 you know, the studies and the research definitely show, um, you know, diversity in the workplace does drive, drive profitability. I think it all comes down to diversity of thought uh, and just what, you know, what does that bring to an organization in order to drive success? And, you know, I think back to just the basics, if, if we were all exactly the same, how boring it would be <laughs> and, and what what would we have to challenge our thoughts and and you know where our organizations are going if we were all thinking exactly the same things and introducing diversity into the workplace um, more over uh, time has really proven to be a benefit um, from every organization's perspective and, and from all of the various uh, components that factor in I think those are really uh, terrific comments, and, and I'd like to build from here and, and just, um, you know, it is International Women's Day, what progress over the last five years. Anna, what, what do you see? I'd love to hear your perspective. <laughs> well, um, as you said, I've been in the industry for, I'm leading in the industry for over 20 years, and there were very few women uh, leaders in healthcare IT. Um, and now I think there's proof going forward um, that there are more women. I'm seeing more women, more leadership uh, from women. It's, and, and part of that proof is I have a lot of long-term uh, mentors and friends that are male and just now starting to develop um, female leadership uh, mentors and, and friendships. Um, but it, it does show that there was a difference in the past. Uh, going into the future, I absolutely believe that um, thought diversity, I agree with you, thought diversity is crucial. It's like a uh, fingerprint or artwork. There, the there's, there's only the original, right? There are no two that, are, that think alike or are alike. And there's something beautiful about that. Hey, Anna, if I, I really, those are such great points. And Carol, if you don't mind, I'd love to, to tag on to Anna's comments. Um, there, so what I'm seeing and it's so encouraging is a purposeful drive from the senior most leaders. Um, I saw this at my last organization and I'm seeing it here where the pro the recruiting process starts with, I really want a diverse candidate in this role. And in fact, we had a call with an executive search team recently, and that was a key part of the brief. And I think when you talk, when you think about, equality versus equity. Um, the terms I, I used to, before I became more educated on this topic, I used to think about those two terms interchangeably. But um, a wise woman said to me a couple of years ago, um, equality is giving all of the kids, even if there's significant height differences, the same ladder to tr try to climb over a fence. And the shorter kid is never gonna be able to use the same ladder that enabled a taller kid to get over the fence. 
And so equity is where we still have to really place our bets in, in starting a conversation with saying, I want a diverse candidate in this role versus some people saying, oh no, equality, everybody should have a fair shot. Well, guess what? When you have work to do as an organization and you don't have enough diverse female leaders, you've got to really think about equity. So I, I love to hear um, stories like yours, Anna, and, and I will say that this is a big change that I've been seeing over the past five years with a whole different attitude at the outset of a, of a recruiting process. Such a great conversation. What I wanted to add is also um, the proportionality of the importance of this discussion. 50% of our world's population is women. And it's always been about half of the demographic population. And here we are um, with all the progress that's been made. We still have about a 60, um, 68% of our managerial, our people leadership positions. And in areas like IT, Anna and Jill, that number is even higher, but we have disproportionately um, lower representation of women in uh, leadership roles, and uh, it varies across industry. Uh, so I, I wanted to uh, make the point that inclusion um, of uh, of such a important contingency in our demographics is so important. It has societal implications when we overlook this sort of disproportionate representation of um, uh, a people in our society. Uh, the other angle that I was wanting to add to this is, you know, we all uh, talk about customer centricity. And uh, I often ask the question is, how can we uh, know the voice of our customers if our boardrooms and our leadership does not reflect the diversity that's in our customer base? So that was the other imperative that I think is important. Both the societal ramifications of this discussion, as well as the, uh, the fact that it really uh, will help us serve our customers better. Those were the points I wanted I, to make. Shoma, the, 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 um, that is so relevant. I, I just came from a client advisory board meeting last week. And in a couple of the side conversations with our clients, um, they told me their expectation is to see a more diverse team in front of them. And that it is, it's not a nice to have, it's an imperative. So clients are um, demanding more diversity. And again, we all have an obligation. Um, our companies have an obligation to rise to the occasion to correct that disproportionate share that you just mentioned, especially in the managerial and leadership ranks. Um, we're making good progress, but we're st we still have a long way to go. And you're right, it is more um, prevalent in the IT and, and technology space, that, that dis disproportionality. How should the C-suite in organizations lead change? What is your perspective as it comes to diversity? I think the number one thing is lead, lead by example. And, uh, you know, really from, from the top down of organizations, we have to be the leaders we expect to see in the world, right? Be the change you expect to see in the world, be the leader you expect you want to see in the world. Um, really starting from that top is going to infiltrate organizations, infiltrate customer relationships and customer experiences. So I really think it is all about leading by example. I, I come back Harvey. to, um, again, it's, it's that um, thought diversity and, and courage. I come back to courage. Um, we learn by being uncomfortable and failing fast. And, and when I say that, it's an interesting thought because is it not, those are two key elements in innovation and transformation is courage and being uncomfortable and failing fast, right? So I, I think women can really shine by opening those doors up and, 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 and showing 
that they have the courage, that they can be uncomfortable and then they can fail fast and they can help be a trans transformational leader. So Purvi, I wanted, I know you were trying to make a comment or two about this. So what, what, what else do you have to add? Um, I would say, you know, it's really about intentionality, right? So kind of I think to some of what Leanna and Shoma and the team have said, right? It really is about intentionality. If you're intentional at the top, your tone at the top, at the C-suite, at the board level has intentionality that I want to improve diversity, right? Diversity is not in, in, in you know, employee resource group activity or some head of HR activity, but this is a business tied activity. And if there is that understanding and that con connection, right? then everything that you do is tied to diversity, right? Whether it be customer, be it employee, you know, satisfaction, all of that, right? And I think that we still have a lot of work to do. Like, right, I go to a lot of board meetings and I go to really observe because I want to learn. I want to understand what is it that they're thinking about. I also want to, you know, plant a seed in their minds about, you know, women, about diverse women, right? I mean, I'm an immigrant, right? I'm a diverse woman. So, right, I'm even further down in the, you know, totem pole, right? So I want to provide some of that perspective I'm going to give them food for thought, but predominantly majority of those are still Caucasian male, right? So that population. So how do you, to Shoma's point, right? How do you improve that intentionality, right? How do you get them to start thinking about it differently so that that permutates across the entire organization, right? It's the tone starts at the top and, and, and it's, Action speaking louder than words, right? There's so many organizations, I think, say, in the last year and a half, two years, since George Floyd's death and everything that's transpired, there's a lot of words coming out, right? But the actions, you can see companies that are very intentional, that are actually doing that work through their actions, not just mere words, some press releases, right? There's intentionality, and you see that. So it goes back to me, it's all about intentionality, right? Bringing that diversity of thought through intentionality. Yeah, Pervy, great points. And, you know, one of the things that was so exciting for me as I was going through the um, interview process at HCL and also uh, doing a lot of research is that our uh, chairperson of the board is, is a woman, um, Roshni Nader, and I was able to talk with her directly as I was um, probably almost toward the end of my interview process. And I learned that 30% of our board of directors is, is female. And the tone absolutely starts from the top. Uh, and, and our CEO also is really championing the cause. And you know that comes even to, into KPPs and, and metrics, right? A metrics driven approach to ensure that we have a, a diverse slate of, of candidates for every position. And then also um, there are other metrics and numbers that we expect um, of our of our leaders and, and their direct reports. So I think you have to put some teeth to it as well. Um, but the tone from the top, I believe, is one of the most critical factors that will drive change across an organization. So we, we've had a couple of examples um, already in this conversation about policies and also recruiting practices and what's been changing. And I've, we've heard some of that from Jill as well as Anne already. I'd love to get you know some additional thoughts on what trends you got, you are seeing currently either within your organizations or um, around your industry. Shoma? Um, lots of green shoots, Carol. Uh, I, um, I think about the lagging influence that women leaders have. And I go back to uh, the big picture, um, the societal implications. Uh, we stand uh, looking at STEM enrollment for women at an all time high. And that's a lagging effect of the inspiration and the role models that have been set forth by this gradual shift to diversity and leadership that Jill and Anna and Purvi and Marty were talking about. So I feel um, that um, uh, it's a flywheel 
you know, by being intentional in corporations, in leadership recruitment, uh, by being intentional uh, if we shift left to education and even primary education, creating the opportunities at the beginning of the funnel for uh, inclusion and diversity in education. I think um, that flywheel has started to uh, work its way. And uh, what I do see is um, uh, in the areas uh, that I'm involved in, in science and technology, there's a real increase in the number of candidates for, uh, representing uh, the spectrum of our uh, peoples. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, gender diversity there. Uh, what I, what my only comment is that uh, you know, there's intentionality at the top, but then it should propagate to where we are attracting uh, young minds to this cause. I think that that's beautifully stated because we're attracting and we're recruiting, but then we also have to take that next step in retention. We have to create a, a culture of belonging for mm -hmm. diversity, right? So all these diverse folks feel they belong because they should feel they belong in an organization. That is where, you know, that next step is. Yeah, we recruited them, but now we need to help them feel like they belong no matter how diverse they are, right? Um, and so I think there's a there's a, a, a big piece to say there. I, I know I when I create that myself as a leader, I'm looking at creating a, as a family, I mean, a circle of safety humor, um, lifting to invest in and grow in, and grow in them, but also that builds that culture of belonging, right? When you belong to a family, you, you feel like you really belong. I mean, who in their family doesn't have these things of circle of safety, humor, lifting and growing folks and helping them and supporting them and saying, I've got your back. So that's that next step after we've got them pulled in, we've got these amazing, thoughtful folks who are diverse, diverse and then we have to retain them. We want to retain those amazing people and build that culture of belonging. One comment I, I love can how you talked about policies. creating a family. One of the things we've really been focused on, where I've seen a big change in the last five years, is is diversity and inclusion groups within our organization. And Anna, to your point, it is creating those families and those safe spaces for people not just you know come together with others but really learn about others and lean in on what does what does make all of us diverse what makes us um, different thought partners you know what do each of us bring i call them superpowers what superpowers do we all bring to the organization and so diversity and inclusion groups has not only given safe space for mm -hmm. others in our organization from and, and you know created retention but it also creates opportunities for learning and partnerships in um, diverse conversations and really doing unconscious bias education and just how do we all show up and think differently how do we support one another just at the at the common ground of being human beings and really just create that safe space for our employees What's the right way um, to create that sponsorship? What has worked for you? What advice do you have? Marty, would you like to start? Yeah, I think, um, you know, creating mentorship opportunities is, is really just, you know, creating those opportunities to um, to, to have thought partners. I love, Anna, what you said about your advisory. I, I, I took a note on that because I'm like, oh, I need the Marty, Marty Advisory Committee, quite frankly. And, and then I started realizing like, oh, I actually already have started that. And I have, I have mentors in our, in our organization and outside the organization. And what I have found over time is really leaning on, um, on some others. We, we are very fortunate. We have uh, females within our C-suite and really um, mm -hmm. leaning on them and looking to them from a mentorship perspective and, and understanding, you know, how did they get to those positions? What drove them through their careers? But on the flip side, also having those relationships with, with others, right? With men in our organization, with others, just from a diversity perspective. Um, and really creating those opportunities to have thought partnership. And, and Anna, to your point, 
What I have found is when you create those opportunities, you are teaching one another. It's not just what can you get from that other person, but what can you give them as well? And what can mm -hmm. what can you share? We all bring, you know, our, you know, I say we bring our tractor trailers behind us of all of our life experiences and and the stories that mold us. And, and so sharing those stories and, and sharing, you know, opportunities and challenges and things that we've been faced with, um, talking to someone, a mentor about, you know, how, how do I show up here? What, you know, what do I do in this situation creates an opportunity and a space to, to give and to take advice and feedback. And I think it's really important that we create those opportunities inside and outside our organizations. It, 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 without that, how, how do we encourage ourselves to think differently? To your point, Anna, how do we influence others? How do we share those stories to educate other individuals um, on, on the topics of diversity and on what each of us can bring um, to, to, you know, the, to the equation to drive for success? Yeah, I'll, I'll just say that one of the things that I have tried to do over the last 10 to 15 years is uh, make connections with young talent, even young female talent, even, you know, in their sophomore, junior year of college um, and giving people who may not have ever had the opportunity to have internships at large global multinationals, whether it be Accenture, JLL, um, and now HCL Technologies, to, to have that opportunity. And I think it's so important, I think, Shoma, you just mentioned it, Anna, you mentioned it earlier, to really connect with that younger talent early on and you know, help open doors, I guess, um, where maybe they otherwise wouldn't have been opened. And then uh, to the point of, you know, keeping um, employee engagement and embracing that inclusion that we discussed, um, I've always been an, a, a big advocate of doing young leadership development programs to, to, again, once these young female leaders are in the door and maybe they're early on in their career, um, giving them an opportunity to shine and further develop and get more executive level exposure. Um, so we all work for uh, relatively large organizations and, and sometimes it's hard to be seen or heard. So I am constantly trying to find opportunities to give my um, diverse team members um, a bigger stage and more opportunities for, for bigger connections. And I think that's something that, you know, we should all be mindful of and is, is really critically important. Jill, Anna, Purvi, by telling the story of unique experiences, Marty, by connecting to her own um, life experiences, Jill, you know, by she's this proponent, Anna is, you know, reflecting, listening, retaining talent. It's, we're all in our own way, um, trying to create that space and show up as role models. And that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, I agree. I first will, will say, I will remember this panel. This is the power panel for Shu. And I think stories and your vulnerability and everything that you shared. Um, as I think about today, I, I thought it would be maybe prudent to end with a quote. And I have a quote that seems to fit here, uh, particularly with our dialogue today from Serena Williams. And she says, every woman's success should be an inspiration to another. We're just when we cheer each other on. And certainly feels that way here. And that's been the, the story here. So I'd like to thank you all very much uh, for your time and for this excellent dialogue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you so Carol. Thank you. thank you, everybody. Bye.